Praise God. Are we on? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. It's always a joy to be here. Amen. Thank you, Mary, for that introduction. I was looking for that couple, but I haven't found them yet. <laughs> I've got a better view now. I can look out across everybody. I was trying to use the eyes in my back of my head, but anyway. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Excuse me a second. Oops. It's always a joy to be here, amen, in your presence, but it's much more of a joy always to be in his presence, isn't it? We were singing that word, I love, I love your presence. Wow. Is that your testimony this morning? You love his presence? Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know you take a big breathe in through your nose, actually. That was a, that was a wrong kind of breathing, wasn't it? Wasn't it, Brian? It, Breathe in his presence, because he's right here. Amen. When we breathe in his presence, we can breathe out his praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Are we live streaming? Yeah. I just want to give a wee shout out to a man, um, an old school friend of Mary, who may or may not be watching. But if he said if he was, I said I'd give him a wee shout out. He's a fine fellow. And I just want to say, hi there, Dandy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, a couple of days ago, I asked the Lord for a sign that this was his word for today. And, and I don't do that very often, but the sign I asked him for, that we would sing the song, <clears throat> Speak the Name of Jesus that we would sing that song, and I think it was the fourth song that we sang, and I, 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 I recognized the, the guitar introduction, I thought, yes, and then after that, it was just mush, <laughs> and I just wanted to get up and preach straight after that, to be honest, but <laughs> hallelujah, I, 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 as soon as I heard that guitar, I just thought, oh, thank you, Father, thank you, Father, amen, hallelujah, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, says, Jesus Christ is the same. See, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the Amplified Bible, it says, Jesus Christ is eternally changeless, always the same, yesterday, today, and forever. So if I tell you today that today's message is titled, More of the Same, some of you might give a bit of a sigh thinking that that probably is the last thing you want to hear because you're probably thinking along the lines of same old, same old. But if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then more of the same means more of Jesus. Which means more of Holy Spirit. Which means more freedom. Because it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it is for freedom that Christ, and please get the tense here, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not, this is a present reality, He has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves, the, pers the, the responsibility is then passed to us. Why? Because he's done everything that he could ever do to set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Another translation says, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. We've been given responsibility to stand firm and resist being entangled or being burdened. Who knows that everything is working out there to entangle us, to burden us again with something that Jesus has already set us free from. 
Hallelujah. More of the same means more of Jesus because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me. The jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. In First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10, it tells us that we are, a, we are the fulfillment of that prophetic word. We are that people. In, in verse 9, it says, you are, a, you are, say you are. Turn that person next to you, say you are. You are a chosen generation. You're not hoping to be or trying to be or one day with your fingers crossed it might just happen. No, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people for a purpose that you may proclaim the praises of him who has already called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Please get these tenses. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So I know that but to, for many in the church, the thought of more of the same is probably equivalent to death by boredom. Whereas more of the same is actually, I believe, our Heavenly Father's elixir of life. It's His prescription, His formula for a life enjoyed in all of its fullness. And if you're not convinced about that, then just Please listen up a little bit. Father, I pray you'd give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to understand what you're speaking to us this morning, seeking to reveal to us this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know how many times over the years but I've heard someone, and that's including myself. In fact, I remember bringing this scripture the, first, the very first service of new wine in Stornoway when we moved from in 91 we started in 93 we moved into Stornoway and and into the town and I remember that first Sunday morning bringing bringing that scripture from Isaiah chapter 43 God is doing a new thing and and many times as as I've heard people say make that statement I've seen those who heard that, that 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 proclamation get really excited at the prospect amen and I believe that's very often because we've been dedicated followers of fashion and fads rather than dedicated followers of Jesus. Children get excited about a new thing, a new toy and a new experience, don't they? And sometimes, although Jesus said, except you become like little children, it's going to be difficult for you to enter the kingdom of heaven. He didn't tell us to stay as little children. There's elements of, of a little child's uh, attitude that, 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 we, that, we, that we should retain at all times, but we need to mature, we need to grow up. Amen. What's the title of the message today? More of the same. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the same. It's all about Him. More of the same is equivalent to more of Jesus, which is equivalent to more of the Holy Spirit, which is equivalent to more freedom. Why? Because Jesus Christ came to bring us into that place of freedom. Amen. You know, when Jesus gave His mission statement back there in Luke chapter 4, as we he was reading, of course, from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, what we call now Isaiah chapter 61. But in Luke chapter 4 there it says, he stood up and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Amen. To heal, to bring healing, to bind up and to heal the broken heart. Does that sound like good news? Does that sound like freedom? To preach deliverance to the captives, does that sound like freedom and good news? recovery of sight to the blind, to open people's spiritual eyes that they might see and behold the truth of, of who God is and who they are in relationship with Him. Does that sound like good news? Does it sound like freedom? His mission statement's all about freedom, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Does that sound like freedom and good news? Of course it does. And then when you've come through that process, you're ready to, to, for Him to announce to you the free favors of God, the salvation and the free favors of God that profusely abound. Hallelujah. You're ready for that. You're open for that. You can receive it. Oh, yes, Lord, lay on me more freedom. More freedom from the curse, more freedom from the stuff that life wants to chuck at us every day. 
Amen. The stuff that comes to bind us up and to entangle us again. Jesus said, some people, even the Word of God in them becomes entangled with the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things enters in and chokes and entangles that Word. More of the same, more of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. More Holy Spirit, more freedom. We become very often in the church, and I'm not here to attack the church. There's more than enough people doing that already. You need to get that settled before we go any further, just in case you might think that I'm ever having a go at the church, because there's too many people already sitting on the sidelines taking pot shots at the church. Amen. I'm talking about Christians, never, never mind the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. But sometimes I think we become more, more like dedicated followers of fashion, followers of fads than, the, than actually dedicated followers of Jesus. And a fad is actually defined as an intense and widely shared enthusiasm for something, especially one that is short-lived and without basis in the object's qualities or a craze. You know, who knows, there's, there's a kind of natural inclination and tendency to be fascinated with every new thing, even if we don't approve of it becomes our focus, either to, either to lift it up or to pull it down. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, the new thing that Isaiah prophesied about, in Isaiah 43 we read it, I believe what he was prophesying about is the new covenant, which was established 2,000 years ago and has never grown old. That's what he was talking about. And that's why that word is still proclaiming over us. It's as fresh and it's as new today as it was in the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came and sealed in the experience of these first new covenant believers that Jesus had made provision for on the cross. He sealed that in them. This is everything that Jesus did at the cross on your behalf. There's nothing you can add to this because there's nothing you'll ever have to add to this because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Try and look a bit more excited, folks. That's it. Hallelujah. <laughs> he really is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why Jesus said new wine must have a new wineskin. Why? Because the new covenant life that he brought by the Holy Spirit must have a new creation. We must know that we're new creations in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come, and you need to be established in that reality. You need to be, have your broken heart healed and know that you're back restored to relationship with your Father in heaven, and that can never change. Nothing can ever change that fact. That's the very basis, the foundation for this new life that we've been given. We're now sons of God. Hallelujah. We're children of God. As many as received Jesus, He gave them the right to be called the children of God. That right will never be taken away from you. You must have that identity established within you. Why? Because this, this new covenant life, this Holy Spirit life, must have that new creation to contain and carry that new life, or else there's going to be a burst. Jesus said that. If you pour new wine into old wineskins, they'll burst. The life is going to burst that old wineskin, and everything's going to get lost. We need to be, know who we are so that we can carry this new Holy Spirit life and have an ongoing experience of that Holy Spirit life. Why? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not supposed to be up and down, here and there, back and forth, to and fro. It's not supposed to be like that. If that's what your Christian life is like, if it's all valleys and mountaintops, you need to repent and get back on track. John the Baptist came as that forerunner to announce what Jesus was about to bring. He said, every valley will be exalted, every mountain will be brought low. Why? So you can walk through this life with a confidence that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, come on, today, and forever. Hallelujah. That means it doesn't matter what comes against us externally. It doesn't matter what comes, because Jesus Christ is the same. That's our confidence. Hallelujah. Listen to these wonderful words in Lamentations. <laughs> Chapter 3, verses 22 to 24. If you know any, of the, any scripture in Lamentations, it's probably this. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. See, somebody knows it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. When your hope's gone, everything's gone. 
That's why the first thing, the good news of the gospel does it establishes us in hope. Hope that doesn't disappoint. Hope that is what our faith attaches itself to. Amen. The good news. Hallelujah. And even within that scripture, there's a prophetic declaration, I believe, that brings good news to us that every day we have a brand new, I want you to hear this because I think this is important today. We have a brand new opportunity to get right what we got wrong yesterday. I also believe that there's a common misconception that's based on a misunderstanding of John chapter 2. And that misconception is that God is saving his best until the end. So we're all looking for this best that's about to show up. I've even heard people say, you know, that well, good is the, is the biggest enemy of the best. But they don't understand that when God said it's good, he said it's the best. When God, when, when, when God was creating this world, everything that he did, he said it is good. But if you go back to the Hebrew, he's actually saying this is the best. You can't better this. Because sometimes we live as dedicated followers of fashion and fads, and because we, we live out so much of, out of our soul, and of, as Carol reminded us this morning, he, he gives us food for our spirit, man. If we don't learn to live out of our spirit, we'll not be able to contain the new wine of the Holy Spirit. Because it's our spirit, man, that was recreated and, and, and born again, and, and, and that, that's where the Holy Spirit took up residence on our, in our spirit. He deposited a cry in there. The first thing that he did was open up a cry on the inside of us. Abba, Abba, Father. He connected us. He reconnected us. He reconciled us. He restored us to relationship with us, with our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. There is no best that's been saved till the end. He did save the best till the end. He saved it for these, what we are now living in called the last days. We've been in the last days since Jesus Established the new covenant 2,000 years ago. Amen. He had been saving his best until the end, and he gave us his best when he gave us Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are you going to better Jesus? I don't think so. <laughs> and it's been quite interesting that this word has been used several times already this morning, which is, which, is, which is what the Holy Spirit does when, he, when we come together as a church, isn't it? As a body of believers. See, I believe that, that the greatest need of the church right now is the restoration of the church back to its original simplicity of message and ministry. What well, is its original message and ministry, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's done everything that he could ever do to establish us in the freedom that he came that we could experience. You know, he's given us that responsibility. Stand firm in that. Let that declaration, what, that was our prophetic prayer this morning, we heard earlier this morning, that, that, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Stand firm in that. Because he's the same. He's not Lord today and not Lord tomorrow. He's not Lord of one part of your life and not Lord of the other. He's Lord Jesus Christ as Lord. That's the simplicity. Don't you love simplicity? In Psalm 119, verse 130, I believe it is, it says, the entrance of God's Word brings light. It gives understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. See, restoration is the, is the action of returning something to a former condition, or, it, or it's the process of repairing or renovating something in order to restore it to its original condition. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever done this, but try to restore like an item of furniture. Mary's probably done this, no doubt. <laughs> and you'll know it can be a very painstaking process because sometimes it involves removing several layers of, of paint or, or, or just grime that's built up over the years before that, that, that piece begins to look like it did originally. And that can be a very painstaking exercise. But it's also a transforming exercise as the old is restored to its brand new condition, its original condition and purpose. And I believe that's what the Holy Spirit wants to bring us as the church is back to that. And that's what he's been doing in New Wine Church in, in, in our message. Because what did the Lord say? That's, that's a prophetic word that's foundational in, in, in New Wine Church is I have not been building a ministry in you or through you. I've been building a message in you, and out of the message, the ministry 
will come. And that will restore New Wine Church Tain back to Tain's original purpose as a town or a city of sanctuary. Hallelujah. You know, as I was meditating on this, I, I was reminded that we as a church have been hearing and applying what the Lord is saying regarding His perfect will. And as we've been doing that, we've been digging down through layers of tradition. That was something the Lord spoke to me many years ago. You're going to have to dig. Those who hear my sayings and do them, they're a wise man who dug down deep. You discover, you get to a point, you think, oh, we've come far enough. And the Lord says, no, there's more. Take another layer off. Because you discover healing and you think, wow, that's fantastic. Jesus still heals. If you stop there, you haven't, you haven't gone far enough. There's another layer that needs to come off. And that other layer brings you back to Jesus already paid the price for healing for everybody, every time, for every sickness and for every disease. Why? Because that's what the Word of God declares. He heals all our diseases. Amen? I mean, that's kind of inclusive, isn't it? Bless the Lord. We were saying that, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Stand firm in the reality, the truth, the revelation that He is the one who heals, who, who forgives all of our iniquities, all of our sins, who heals all our diseases, who delivers us from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies our mouth with good things. We've only got good things to say. Now we angry and sing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We don't have bad news for anybody, only good news. What does that do? You discover your youth, just like marriage, has been renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the, you, you know how you move from flapping to soaring? You just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Apparently an eagle spends 10% of its life flapping and 90% soaring, whereas believers who are, who we are, we are, God calls us believers on more than one occasion. He calls himself an eagle, calls us believers, calls himself an eagle, and calls us eagles as well. Because too often we are doing 90% flapping and 10% soaring. That's why we need to get back to the truth of God's Word, because only His Word will bring us back from flapping to soaring. And His will is always that we learn how to soar. Eagles get to see things that no other bird sees because they get so high up there in the sky. They get a, a different perspective on everything than other birds get. Who knows when you're up at 40,000 feet in a, in, in, in a Boeing 777 or something, you look out the window, everything looks flat. Maybe, maybe you, and you look at your wee, your wee, your wee picture uh, of, of the, you know, in these days in a plane, you know, it shows you where you are and everything else and your altitude and all that sort of stuff. And you think, hang on a minute, we're flying over a mountain range right now. And you look out the window and, oh, that's interesting. It looks kind of flat from here. Every valley will be exalted and every mountain will be brought low so you can. Hallelujah. Stand firm. Stand firm in the truth of what God's Word declares over you. Not what circumstances declare. Not even what your past experience is trying to remind you of and haul you back down into. No, no, no. What does God's Word say? Peeling back the layers of tradition, of, of, of experience-based teaching, and all of that stuff that has left you in a semi-restored condition. Whereas God's heart has always been to restore us back to His original purpose. Hallelujah. We've been digging down through layers of tradition, wrong teaching, as we aim to become that church that reflects God's design and its original glory. Amen. So instead of the church looking for the new thing that we can add to our existing structure and practice, we should focus more on getting stripped back to basics. And the commission we've been given, when we sang that song, for the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I need a drink of water. When you're drinking water with one of these, does it amplify it? You hear this glug, glug, glug. <laughs> <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
for the sake of the world, for the sake of who? The sake of the world, the sake of people out there this morning who don't know. I was getting in my car and you see people, somebody runs past, you know, doing a wee jog and somebody else is out walking their dog. I say, why are you not in church? Surely church is more exciting than walking your dog. Surely church is more exciting than going for a wee run around. Come on. Is it not? Is that what you tell them on Monday morning? Is that what you're telling them all week, how exciting it is? Because Jesus is the same yesterday. He's not just Jesus on Sunday morning. He's Jesus every single day of the week, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Let that fire burn every Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to redeem. Monday's become Monday. Did you know that? We need to redeem it back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Remember the title of this message is, come on, somebody help me, more of the, if you can dare to say it without hurting yourself. <laughs> I don't know about you, I've always loved natural wood. Mary's house has got a lot of natural wood in it. And, you know, I can never understand why, why people apply layers of paint to wood. And they're trying to make it look more attractive. They're trying to improve how it looks when all they're doing, I believe, in my opinion, is just masking its original character and beauty. I mean, have you ever looked at, just sitting and looked at natural wood sometimes and just seen its character and everything, all of the, just, it's just amazing. And then people come along with a tin of paint, Dulux one coat, and shoop, 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 and that's it. Then somebody else comes along, doesn't like that color, and puts another color on top, and then another one, and another one, and then someone one, at some point decides, I want to bring this back to what it's supposed to look like, and, the, and then the the hard work begins. <laughs> you could give up halfway and say, ah, oh, well, that's far enough. No, but you just keep going. Why? Because you want to see it in its natural, original beauty. Amen. Its original character. Anyway, here's a scripture for you. I don't believe that we are the first to, to have, to have, to have uh, recognized that we need to get back to something rather than always looking around for something that's going to come and change everything instantaneously attaching ourselves to some fashion that eventually just wears out. Hallelujah. Jude, in verse 1. Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. You know that he was his half-brother. He doesn't, and he could have, he could have <coughs> this is Jude here, by the way. I grew up with Jesus. He was my half-brother. <laughs> That's probably what people would say today. Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, who was also a half brother of Jesus, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning your common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Hey, good morning, saints. <laughs> the faith that once for all delivered to the saints. The faith that was once for all. Does that sound like it needs some kind of modification? Does that sound like it needs a new thing to spice it up or help it along a little bit? Now, to me, it sounds like what we're being asked to contend for is not a new thing, but more of the same. Why? But what, was, what was that faith once and for all delivered to the saints? Jesus is Lord, and He's Lord of all. He's Savior, He's Healer, He's Deliverer, He's Provider. Amen. He's your peace, He's, he's the source of your joy, He's everything. That, that message that was once delivered for all time to the saints is Jesus will be, always be everything that you will ever need. And He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, so after, after Moses' death, and I know you've been looking at this in your current series that Mary's been doing on, 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 uh, on the unpacking the prophetic. I'll get there, don't worry. <laughs> But after Moses' death, Joshua was commissioned. I've preached this message before, by the way. I've preached it three times over the last maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 years. This is not, it'll come out new today, but it's not, it's not, 
It's not a new thing, if you like. Hallelujah. It's something that's, that's been in my heart for a long, long time, and it comes out now and again when I, when, when the, I believe the Holy Spirit says, this is the word. As I said, I asked the Lord for that, for that sign, and he, and, he, and he showed me, this is, this, you, this is the word for today. Hallelujah. For New Wine Church 10, on the, whatever day it is in October, <laughs> 2000, and, and uh, 22, I believe, was still in. <laughs> And by the way, we still have um, 5, 7, 8, 2, 2, uh, 2022, the year of reconciliation. I believe the word the Lord has given for 5, 7, 8, 3, 2023 is, is that this will be the year of awakening to righteousness, of the church finally waking up to who they really are and who they've been all along. And that, that changes everything. That just brings us right back to that, again, to that place of simplicity of message and of ministry. Hallelujah. That's the very foundation of everything. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You can't add to that. You can't take away from that. Amen. That's just the way it is. Why? Because it's already a transaction that's already taken place. It took place at the cross when Jesus became sin for us. He became sin with our sinfulness. And you can say things like that and just, it's just words and it just passes through in one ear and one ear. Get a hold of that. He became sin with our sinfulness with the purpose that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. That we might have right standing with God, that we might have, that, that, be able to come into God's presence without a sense of fear or guilt or shame or condemnation because all of that's been removed. It was nailed to the cross. So that we truly can have a relationship with our Father in heaven. Wow. Oh, a better watch will be rabbit trailing, but anyway. After Moses' death, Joshua was commissioned to lead God's people into the promised land. Now, the Lord didn't say to Joshua that Moses had failed because he had rejected God's new thing, but he actually, in effect, told him that he would succeed if he basically did more of the same as that which Moses had been doing. Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 to 9, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I'm not going to be with you, Joshua, to a different degree as I was with Moses, as I was. More of the same, Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. He's, what's he saying? He didn't abandon Moses on top of a mountain to expire and take his heavenly flight. No, no. He said, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I will not leave you just as I never left Moses. I will not leave you just as I never forsook Moses. I will never forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Who, who knew more about how God had been with Moses than Joshua did? Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord was saying to Joshua that he wasn't to spend the rest of his time seeking out a new thing or before he, he took up this calling to seek out some new thing that was going to help him, but that more of the same would actually be sufficient to prosper their journey, to cause them to succeed in their commission. Just stick with the game plan, Joshua. It hasn't changed. It's the same. Stop hunting around looking for some new way in. Just walk in it. Just walk it out. Anybody convinced you? Anyway. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Do you see the similarity there between this commission and the one that was given to Joshua? 
See, that the first apostles, they weren't told to spend their lives looking for God's latest new thing or to sit around waiting for this new thing. But they were actually exhorted to believe that more of the same was actually the key to successfully reaching the nations with the fullness of the gospel. Amen. That's why in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we're told that the first disciples continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, which was the same teaching that the apostles themselves had received from Jesus. Amen. It was more of the same. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, Paul speaking to Timothy, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Ensure that what's passed on is always more of the same. Paul was instructing Timothy that he wasn't to spend his time in ministry chasing after all of the many new things that would show up in the church, but that his ministry would be fulfilled in faithfully teaching, somebody help me, more, if you're convinced yet, more of the same. Hallelujah. We need to get past our understanding of a statement like that. We think that's a negative statement. How could that be negative <laughs> when we're talking about Jesus? Because he's the same. More of, Jesus, more, more of the same is G, more of Jesus, more of the Holy Spirit, more, come on, more freedom for people, hallelujah. And that's always been my desire for New Wine Church is, is to hear that its, its members speak words that are aligned with the message that we have been established in, so that we can release church planters who will not be distracted by pursuing a new thing, but who will be faithful in proclaiming and declaring more of the same. Declaring what? More of the same. The Lord's shown me many times over the years very clearly that we have not been adding new revelation. Sometimes you're accused of bringing new revelation. Oh, you're claiming there's new revelation. No, no, we're not bringing new revelation. But what we have been doing is been stripping away the layers of extra scriptural isms that have been masking the revelation that was already there. That's always been there. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We've been digging down, stripping away all of these layers so that we can restore the simplicity of the original, that faith once for all delivered to the saints. Do you not like that statement, once for all, once for all? Jesus was crucified once for all. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25 says that there should be no schism in the body. Many years ago, the Lord said to me, it's isms that bring schisms. It's the isms that create the schism, the splits or the divisions that are caused by, by differences of opinion or belief. And that's why it's so essential that we, that we strip away all of the isms in order to restore the true unity of the faith. You know that that's Jesus' heart for the church is that we come to the unity of the faith. Ephesians chapter 4, it starts out by talking about the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, that we are, we, we are responsible to maintain that. So that means we keep reaching out our hands to other believers from different camps and whatever, you know, streams and whatever you want to call them. Even if they don't want to shake our hand, we keep reaching out our hand because we've been, we've been tasked with that maintaining of this unity of the Spirit. That's the unity of the Spirit. We recognize that we're brothers and sisters, even though we might be miles apart and other things. But the, but the aim is always to, for us to come, later on in Ephesians 4, it tells us to come to that place of the unity of the faith. No longer children tossed around by every new thing. That's my paraphrase, you understand. But we come to that place of saying, I just agree with how do we come that we just agree to agree with what God says? We are in His Word, His unchangeable, eternal, fixed forever Word. Hallelujah. Who knows that even very soon after the, church, the original church was birthed, there was those who were trying to apply a, a, a layer of Judaism, trying to roll that back in, which basically was in effect legalism. And they tried to lay that on the first believer. And you know, even if you go back and read through the book of Acts, even some of the apostles were caught up in it for a season. But then Paul came and exposed it for what it was. 
On several occasions, he warned churches to beware of it. I mean, he came, he said, I had to stand Peter to his face. I had to come to Peter and say, Peter, you're out of order here. This is the same Peter, let's get hold of this, the same Peter who got the revelation of you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom Jesus said, upon that revelation, Peter, I will build my church. And yet he'd let it slip. He allowed the Judaizers to come in and bring him under their spell. And he was, he was kind of a bit double-minded and a bit two-faced sometimes, and he would speak one message where some folks were around, and he would speak another message when other guys were around. If you've got any of that and you need to get rid of it, it's, it's an unstable man. Uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. A double-minded man can't stand for him in the freedom that's already ours. Hallelujah. I mean, think of, think of the many schisms created by denominationalism with all of its different isms. And even, even in our experience, in, 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 our, in our region of the highlands and islands, it can create schism between the promoters of Presbyterianism and Pentecostalism. You know, we need to hear what he's saying today because today is the day when salvation is available. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Do not reject his word. You know, the wonderful thing is that the word is refreshed every new day so that it's still relevant, so that it's still available, so it's still accessible to everyone who will just simply believe and receive. His mercies are fresh every morning. Hallelujah. Even if we got it wrong yesterday, guess who hasn't changed? Jesus is still the same. The same that he offered to you yesterday is available to you today because he hasn't changed, because he's still the same today as he was yesterday. And if you blow it today, you'll be there tomorrow, offering you the same mercy and grace. I want to encourage you, if, if you failed to apply the word yesterday, then just leave yesterday in the past where it belongs. And ap- apply that word today. You know how many people live under the guilt and the shame of, of, think, of thinking they've missed God because they missed him yesterday? There's deliverance for someone here this morning. I believe this. I believe some of you are thinking that life has passed you by. That you've missed opportunities that you'll never be able to access again. That you've blown your chance. I want to expose that as a lie. How do you do that? Well, you just bring the truth. And the truth is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you haven't missed your opportunities you haven't blown your chances because whatever happened yesterday has gone. But today you have a fresh opportunity. Today you have a new chance, another chance. Hallelujah. Because yesterday has gone. It's today, today. It'll always be today until tomorrow. And tomorrow will be today, tomorrow. Do you know that? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yesterday was today, yesterday. Tomorrow will be today, tomorrow. But today is today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to pick up everything that Jesus accomplished on your behalf, whatever that is. See, yesterday might be gone, but Jesus is the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want us to move this forward because there's something important I want to get to. Hallelujah. Because there's something that puzzled me for a for a few weeks, and you know, when things puzzle you, what do you do with them? Do you just, I always go to the Lord and say, Lord, what is this? I, I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm not sure exactly what you're saying <laughs> and what you're saying. So help me to understand this. And it says, it, and, and James doesn't say, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who always gives liberally to everyone who asks. He's longing to answer your questions. Don't, don't ever be ashamed or afraid to ask him questions. He longs to answer your questions. Let's see, let's see what it says in St. Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 to 4. Paul writing to this church in Corinth says, I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. 
For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, really, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel, how do you know it's a different gospel? It's not good news anymore for a start. Because the gospel is always good news, isn't it? So if you ever hear someone presenting to you a gospel that doesn't sound like good news anymore, just reject that immediately. They're taking you away from the simplicity. It's not complicated, but someone's trying to complicate it for you. Someone's trying to make it more complicated than God ever intended it to be. But it's not, it doesn't sound like good news. It's not a gospel anymore. I'm talking about good news as, as, as attached to what Jesus accomplished at the cross when he provided salvation, healing, deliverance, provision, everything for everybody at all times, through all generations, because he's the same yesterday and today and forever. Paul's writing to this church, this, these believers, he said, he said, you might well put up with it. You, they bring a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. He says, what's going on? Something not right there somewhere. Well, let, let me ask you a question. I mean, just out of interest, but it's not just out of interest, it's, I'd like to recommend something to you. Are you familiar with the basic message of New Wine Church? Do you know anything of the seven pillars of the storm-free life? That God, has, in His Word, has promised us that it's possible for us to have a sin-proof heart, a sickness-proof body, an oppression-proof mind, recession-proof finances, a divorce-proof marriage. Isn't that good news, eh? We can have relationships that are free from all of the stuff that relationships get bluttered by. <laughs> offense and all bitterness and all that stuff that grows up out of all that. And ultimately, we can have a death-proof life, because if you're born again, you've done all the dying you're ever going to do. You died with Christ. You've been raised again with Him to live this new life. Amen? You, didn't, you don't get eternal life when you die. You got eternal life the moment you were born again. I think we already heard that this morning, basically, in our communion time. Hallelujah. Do you know anything about the immutables? That, that, that New Wine Church was founded upon. You know, immutables are unchangeables. And they're based upon God's Word, that, that we're already sinners. We're, we're, sorry, we're not sinners trying to get righteous. We're, we're, already the righteous <clears throat> we're already the righteousness of God with power and authority in Jesus' name to say no to sin, to resist sin. We're not the sick trying to get healed. We're already the healed with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist sickness. And that's good news. Amen. Jesus said, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. To trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy so that nothing shall by any means ever harm, harm you or hurt you. You say, well, it doesn't feel like that. Well, that's why well, you need to stand up and get up and say, hang on a minute. These are, this is the truth. I'm standing on this. I'm standing on the truth. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. I don't, I don't feel free from symptoms of sickness. Well, get up and say, hang on a minute. They, they don't belong in my body anymore. Someone said to me one time, are you denying the, 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 the existence of sickness? Because I know there are people who make such crazy statements. I said, how could you possibly deny the reality of sickness when there's so many sick people around? When, we, when our bodies still get attacked. But what I am doing is I'm denying that sickness the right to exist in my body because I refuse to accept anything that Jesus already took on my behalf. I'm not going to take ownership of it. I'm not going to allow it to exist in my body a second longer than... I'm just going to tell it, no, you're not coming in here. You will not make your home here. You will not strip me of the life that Jesus came that I could have in abundance. And that's just the way it is. Amen. We're not, we're, not, we're not the oppressed trying to get delivered. We are already the delivered with power and authority to resist oppression and depression and demonic impression and suppression and every kind of pressure and session, including the kirk session that ever comes against you. Hallelujah. Sorry, Katrina. I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We're not even the poor trying to prosper. We're already the prosperous with power and authority to resist poverty. Do you know that poverty is a spirit that is always trying to get on you? There's people who, who have got bank accounts that I couldn't even imagine that are still gripped by that poverty spirit because they still think it's not enough. But Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, said, I've come that you might have more than enough life. In every area of that life, I will always ensure that you have more than enough. And I'll allow him to define that. 
I don't have the right to define that. He's the one who said it. He's the one who will define it. But I've learned in whatever state I am in, there to be content. Because I know that my Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's promised he'll never leave me alone. He'll never abandon me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never leave me helpless and hopeless and despairing. He'll never, ever do that. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he only ever speaks good news. He only ever has good news for me. Nothing else. Hallelujah. If you're not familiar with these things, they're all freely available. Hallelujah. They're on, they're on newwinechurch.com. You'll find all of these things. You'll find thousands of hours of, of teaching that's come out of these immutables and out of these principles. And faith comes by hearing. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And you might not want, you might not want that, but if you do, then it's there. It won't cost you anything apart from some time. And you know what the Bible says about time? It says, redeem the time. Why? Because the days are evil. If you ever needed to be established in these truths, it's right now. Anyway, I had a thought recently, okay, and you need to bear with me, as I said, I'm not here to have pot, take pot shots that everybody else has taken, but I had a thought recently that, and this is the thought that came to me, I believe it's a Holy Spirit thought, and this was the thought that sections of the Pentecostal charismatic church, this is quite a strong term, had been hijacked by the prophetic movement. But what does, what hijack actually means to unlawfully seize it used to be applied to like an aircraft or a ship or a vehicle that's in transit and force it to go to a different destination or use it for one's own purposes, to take over something and use it for a different purpose. So I thought, hang on a minute, Lord. Well, I know that, that the prophetic means a lot of good people in it. I know there's a lot of good stuff and everything else. So I'm, a, I'm struggling with this a bit. Help me. So I, I, I sat on it. I think I shared it with Katrina and maybe one or two other people, and then I sat on it for a while and and just, I said, Lord, help me with this. I, I said, I'm going to meditate on this until I get some more clarity on this. And I believe that the Holy Spirit led me to the Scripture. Who knows that's all, where all of the answers are. Amen. And this is, this is where he led me, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets. Then he goes on and it says, third teachers, and after that, miracles, blah, blah, blah. I don't mean blah, blah, blah. You don't understand, et cetera, et cetera. Go back and read it anyway. <laughs> I'll try to move this forward, okay? First apostles. That's not talking about a hierarchical structure. That's not talking about any sort of kind of makes apostles better than prophets. But it's very important. Whenever God says something in his word, and he places something in a particular order in his word, you must respect and give honor to that order because there's, there's, there's revelation in that order. There's, there's protection in that order. Amen. Like, I hear people misquoting John 10.10 10 all the time. You know, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Why? Because they think killing's worse than stealing. But it's talking about the Word of God, and so it's far worse to get the... It's a worse... Uh, you're in a worse predicament if the Word of God gets stolen out of your heart, because then that's when you're open to the killing and destroying. Anyway, that's just an example. But first apostles, second prophets. The first has to be an apostolic foundation. What is an apostolic foundation? Well, if you go to the Scripture, it will teach you. It's, 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 it means a, a foundation that's stripped back to Jesus and everything that he's already accomplished. Paul said there's no other foundation that can be laid other than Jesus Christ. This is the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And then... From that foundation, the prophets can legitimately prophesy from that foundation. And here's a statement for you, okay? I believe the Holy Spirit gave me this. You can test it, and I would advise you to. Prophets don't set the agenda. They prophesy from the agenda. And so if you don't have a, a foundation that says Jesus provided and did everything that was ever necessary to be done already, the prophecies will not be coming from that agenda. And that's how the church can get hijacked. Because I discovered, I, was listen, I, listened, I tried to listen to as much stuff as I can without overloading myself, just because I want to know what's happening out there in the church, you understand? And, you know, what I've seen is, I've seen the prophetic create a diversionary discontentment among believers regarding the church. You see, 
Because, because so, if, if they prophesy not from that foundation that is Jesus, then you will just, it will be soulish. And soulish prophecy comes to attach itself to one part of you. It comes to hook your soul. And because the prophetic has become so fashionable, really, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be insulting or offending, or sometimes I am, but <laughs> I'm not trying to be. <laughs> if you understand, please accept that's the truth. But uh, it's become very fashionable. And so, because of that, if you're a dedicated follower of fashion, you want to be acceptable within that environment, don't you? So you accept what is said, and then you want to fit in, and you want to conform to how the prophetic is now telling you how you should feel. There's a lot of words that are coming that are telling you to be discontented with church, discontented with things as they are. Now, if you're not back on that foundation, well, you probably, you're going to feel that way anyway. But the, the prophetic, you see, the, the, as we were worshiping today, I was asking the Lord, give me more wisdom on this, give me more clarity on this. And this is what he said. He said, all of the prophecies that were prophesied about, Je- prophesied about Jesus in the old covenant, they all arose out of the agenda that was already set in heaven. Do you know what an apostle means? It just means a sent one, that right? Trevor. Apostle means sent one, I'm picking on you. Apostle means sent one. Well, who is the original sent one? Who's the apostle and high priest of our calling? His name is Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So all of the prophetic words that prophesied the coming of the Messiah, the, 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 the anointed one, all of these prophetic words arose from the agenda that was already set, the apostolic agenda that was already set in heaven. And so all prophetic words that come to the church should become arising from an apostolic foundation that Jesus Christ is everything, that He's already done it all, that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Otherwise, they'll come out of a soulish realm which can be hijacked again by another spirit. That's why we're told very clearly you must, you must test every prophetic word to see what spirit is coming from, because if it comes from the Holy Spirit, it will be pointing you straight back to Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, who never changes who doesn't have any new things for you apart from the new thing that he established, which never gets old, which is new every morning, which gives you a fresh opportunity every morning to come and pick up the manna of heaven and walk in the fullness and feed yourself on that and get strong from the inside out. Hallelujah. And meet every challenge and every battle and win it. Hallelujah. And come out as the overcomer that you already are. More than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. There's a prophetic element that tries to tell you this is how you should feel. And you want to be accepted. You want to be part of the fashion. You want to be wearing the right clothes, the right trainers, all of the stuff. That, that's just called peer pressure. Which is just fear pressure. Come on. So you, you, you want to say, oh yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, that's, oh, I've been feeling that way for years. I'm so glad you said that. I've been feeling that way for ages. Somebody help me. What's it got, ever had to do with feelings? Someone help me with this. It's never had anything to do with feelings. We, we don't live by feelings. We live by... We're good at making statements like that and then not living by them, you know what I'm saying? What's got, if I went with my feelings, I wouldn't be here this morning. I'd be still in bed. I woke up this morning, I thought, oh, God. Last day, I went to the Barry's living room and I was, I was sitting there and I was trying to go up and I thought, oh, I thought, man, I, I'm like, I feel like a bother. I started dancing. <laughs> man, it's just what you do. Just, I got up there like an old man. I'm going, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, I'm going to say we're going to shift this right. Okay, we'll get it. Does that help anybody? Does that make any sense? Take a little meditate on it, chew on it. I don't. I hope you won't find any bones. I tried to. I tried to fill it as best I could. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to hear what the Holy Spirit says. I'm not trying to bring something. I'm just trying to hear what God is saying and bring what He's saying. That's all I'm trying to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I believe it's important. Because I believe. The elements of the church have been hijacked. And if you're being hijacked, you need, you need to, hallelujah, get, your, get yourself back on course. Get back to the reality that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no new thing, just everything that he's already done. And there's loads more of that. Hallelujah. But it's more of the same. Remember what the Lord said to Joshua? There's no new thing, but more of the same will guarantee that you succeed. 
Remember what Jesus said to the first apostles, there's no more new thing, but more of the same will accomplish your commission. Remember what Paul said to Timothy, there's no new thing to distract you, Timothy, but more of the same will enable you to fulfill your ministry and ensure the integrity of this ministry for generations to come. And please remember what I'm telling you today. There is no new thing that you have to pursue, but more of the same will equip you and equip us as a people for victory. And we'll go from faith to faith and from glory. More of the same isn't death by boredom. More of the same is an invitation to experience a, a journey that takes you from faith to faith, from one level of glory to another level of glory. Amen. And never forget that Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, more of the same is equivalent to more of Jesus, which is equivalent to more Holy Spirit, which is equivalent to more freedom. Never forget that He is able to do exceeding, abundantly, far above all that we could ever ask or think, because the gospel is always good news, and it's always about freedom. Amen? Let's stand up. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. Get ready for more of the same. And I want to, I want to backtrack a little bit here because I believe the, the, the Holy Spirit wants to do some things in our lives this morning because He always does, doesn't He? He wants to confirm the Word and hallelujah. I believe He's saying this. Get ready for more of the same, more of Jesus, more of the Holy Spirit, more freedom. You know why? Because the more f- free people there are, the more free people there will be because free people, free people, Amen. And as we were, I, I asked the Lord for that sign about that song because he, he's saying, get out there and speak in the name of Jesus. Get out there and, and make sure that everybody knows that he's the same yesterday and today and forever, that he still forgives sin regardless of how bad it is. No matter how guilt, much guilt and condemnation that sin has wrapped you up in, he comes to forgive you and release you from that. He still heals the sick He still heals broken bodies. He still opens blind eyes and opens deaf ears. He still gives the dumb an ability to speak. Hallelujah. Amen. He still provides for the needs of his people and those who trust in him. Hallelujah. You know, in in, in a generation where mental health has become fashionable, that's a big big shift in in one generation, by the way, from when I remember (laughs) And in in some respects, it's okay that people are talking about these things, but we need to tell them Jesus is the one who will bring deliverance to you. Amen? Yes, mental health is a reality, just like physical sickness is a reality, but come on, Jesus died to deliver us from that. He actually says that our, 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 our whole lives can be transformed by the renewing of our minds, by restoring true mental health. Hallelujah. Amen, that aligns itself with God's promises and God's word. What, a, what, a, what good news we carry. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire. I mean, but I, just, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to put his finger on one thing this morning, and that's people who might be here today who might think that life has passed you by, that just more of the same is, is almost like, oh, you just cursed me with something. And I came to bless you with something. And this is the blessing that's attached to these words, that the same Jesus... He walked around on this earth 2,000 years ago. He's walking in our midst right now. And he's saying your day hasn't passed you by. He's saying that you haven't missed your last chance. You haven't blown it. You didn't miss opportunities. You might have missed them, but that's yesterday. But today, here's here's the fresh opportunity for you. Will you step into it today? Will you step out of your guilt and your shame and your condemnation and step into the freedom that he's made available to you today? Hallelujah. 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 Could we, could we maybe sing that song again? Let's speak the name of Jesus because his name is power. His name is healing. His name is life. I, I can't really say that without. Oh, oh, shakabusa. Gimba shakamon loy adestos. Same Jesus is here right now. He's here right now. Hallelujah. And he said, here you are. Come and receive. I provided everything that you'll ever need. Come and take it. Come and receive from it. What do you need? 
You need, do you need an injection of hope? Well, I came to bring you that hope. Hallelujah. His name is power. His name is healing. His name is life.